Okay, so thank you business builders for showing up today. We have the pleasure of having the Brooke Hemingway with us today. She's gonna pour into our little business builders here and um, give us some little nuggets to chew on. Um, I'm just so excited to be a part of this team. I love each and every one of you. I actually adore you because without you, there wouldn't be a team. <laughs> there would be no, it would just be I. And that is very lonely in Phyllis's book because I don't like just being around me. I love people, I love energy, and I love um, just teamwork. I love to be together. So <clears throat> that's kind of a lot of what we're gonna talk about today is teamwork. How do we become a team? How do we become a better team? And, um, and what does that look like? How does it look, you know, what does that look like supporting each other um, all for a common goal, right? Because we're all looking for the same thing. We want better health here, right? Number one, that's what brought us to Plexus was better health. Number two, <clears throat> we have found, I think we've all struck gold. When you, when you feel better, you naturally want to share that. <clears throat> and I believe that's at the core of each one of the hearts I see here just in front of me. I know more, we'll watch this later. But I know that's what you guys want is um, better health and wellness and then to share with your friends because your friends and family deserve to feel this amazing too. So how do we do that? How do we come together as a team? How do we, um, you know, help each other out? How do we meet each other's needs? Because every single personality I'm looking at here, we are all super different. And so my needs are not going to be your needs and your needs are not going to be my needs. But like, what do we do here? So. Um, all right, I guess with that, Brooke, I'll let you take it away and then I'll just kind of fill in the gaps and anybody else that wants to say something, Miss Barbie, if you've <laughs> something, let's go for it, girls. All right, well, I'm happy to be here too and I love just getting to um, help encourage and inspire people as well and I think since it's the beginning of the year, this is the best time to, uh, to do this and I know a lot of you will be watching this call later um, you know, because you're at work or whatever right now or have some other commitments going on right now. So if you're watching the replay, I'm super glad that you are taking the time to do this. I feel like at the beginning of the year, it's such a great time to take everything back to why you're doing this and what you want to create because really tapping into why you're here, what it is you want to see change in your life, what that looks like, what that feels like, what it creates for you, what type of margin it gives you in your life, what type of freedom it gives you in your life, and what type of satisfaction it gives you in your life is really important to motivating you to move forward. I know that everybody's why can be different. For some people, it really is to be able to make a full-time income. For some people, it is to make $1,000 a month to be able to pay extra bills. For some people, it's getting out of debt. For some people, it's having your products paid for for you and your entire family because you've got several family members on the products and they're changing your life and you want to be able to afford them. Um, for some people, it is the, the dream of taking your family on a trip of a lifetime. Maybe to be able to take them to Hawaii or take them to Disneyland or um, you've always wanted to go to Europe or whatever it is you wanted to do. Um, it doesn't really matter what your why is, but it has to be something that really moves you inside that when you sit down and you think of your most incredible life you could live and living a life on your terms that it almost brings you to tears because when you dream about it and you know you don't have it right now, you really, really want it. You want that thing in your life. And so, um, so that's, that's what I think you have to start your focus on as we move into 2020. Um, when we talk about teamwork and team dynamics, I love teamwork. I love culture and the, and the spirit of encouragement that a team brings. And there's nothing like it. And we have an incredible team, um, both within Phyllis and Barbie's team and within my greater team as a whole. And it's something that I've been very protective of and very intentional in creating because, um, you know, in our team, we have people that have um, built a business really quickly. We have people that have built a business slowly and steadily. We have people that work full-time, part-time, not at all that are stay-at-home moms. We have people that are very educated, people that are high school dropouts, people from all different 
kinds of, you know, lifestyles and life experience and everything. And so I feel like, you know, when you're in a team, you can really appreciate that. But when you peel back all the layers, we all have the same basic needs. We all have the same basic desires in life. And that is, we want to be happy. We want to have more security and stability. Um, specifically, financially, we want to be able to have choices and security and stability. And we want to feel connection. We want to feel um, like we're a part of something where people understand us, where we're heard, where we're valued and we're important. And I know that um, Phyllis and Barbie both try to do that. Um, and what you have to offer to the team is unique. Nobody else can offer the same things that you can. And so one of the things that I would love to encourage you guys to do is um, I would love for you guys to think about what do I have that's unique to offer the team? What do I have that I can contribute? So if you are a research buff and you love to research gut health or you love to know every ingredient and what it does in the products, awesome. You can be the person on a team thread or on the team page that posts interesting articles that shares with people, I learned this about X Factor Plus and I wanted to share it with you guys. Like you can be that person. Maybe you're the person that is like really into like mindset and motivation and inspirational quotes because maybe that's something you've struggled with. And so you really dig into that stuff and you listen to podcasts or you read daily devotionals or quotes or TED Talks or whatever, and you are the person in the team threads or on the team page that posts that stuff. I know that Phyllis would be happy to have people that just like, I listened to this podcast today. It was about fears. Here's what I learned from it. I encourage you guys to listen to it. Post. Boom. Right? Or I read this amazing testimonial about someone who started Ease and this is what it did for them. Boom. So I want you to think about what are the things that interest you? Are you really interested in the products ingredients? Are you interested in inspiration, motivation, and encouragement? Are you interested in business? Are you someone that wants to become a student of network marketing? And you're going to go and pick up Sarah Robbins, Rock Your Network Marketing Business, or Eric Worre's Go Pro, or you're watching um, Fraser Brooks Lives. If you don't know who Fraser Brooks is, he's hilarious and he's um, basically an incredibly successful global network marketer. You know, maybe you watch his page and his quotes and his lives and you're like, oh my gosh, I watched this today. Um, and, and you become somebody that gives tips on the things that you're learning from network marketing books or videos that you are, um, that you're partaking in. Um, maybe you have just learned a lot about the compensation plan. And you're like, wow, this is really incredible. This is what I realized about the compensation plan. And you become a sort of expert on the compensation plan and you share about it in the team page. Like we all have different things we're interested in. Some people are like number crunchers. They love all that stuff. And some people are like, I just want to have the fun. Just like bring me the fun and you're going to be that person that brings the fun element to the team. And then other people that are like the total product nerds, which is definitely what I started out as. I definitely started as a product nerd. Okay. I've tr I transitioned into ooh business savvy, really interesting. And so you're going to go through different phases of things that you're interested in, but you have something to add to the team. And as people on the team see you learning and posting, and also as people on your own social media network, um, like page on your personal page, like this is stuff you should be sharing on your personal page too. If you learn about a product, you learn about an ingredient, you read a story, you learn something about network marketing that you're like, nobody knows this. Um, you learn something about inspiration, motivation, and encouragement, all that same stuff would do so well on your social media account because you have to think of yourself as someone that's just learning out loud. I'm just, I'm learning things and I'm excited about it and I'm sharing it with other people. If that's the energy you have as you approach social media and building a business, sharing a business and being a part of a team, you will do exceptionally well. If you keep that energy and excitement up all the time. 
So always learning, always growing. That's like one of my number one mottos, always learning, always growing. But here's the thing. If you keep it all to yourself, it stops with you. Like everything that you're learning, growing, experiencing with the products, with what you're learning about them, with the business, what you're learning about it. If you just keep it inside and say, oh, that's really cool. You haven't actually changed anybody's life. You haven't actually helped anybody else. And there are so many people out there that have no idea what's available to them in these products, in this community, in this business. And so I want to encourage you guys to become more engaged in learning and then reteaching what you're learning to the team and to your social media. And maybe you might be like, I'm so overwhelmed. My life is so busy. I don't have overwhelm is a choice. And I say that with a great like love and respect because I used to be somebody that said that all the time. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed. I don't have enough time for everything. Like I, that was like classic for me, my first couple years in the business. And then I realized, gosh, if I'm telling myself that all the time, I'm internally stressing myself out. Instead, if I just set aside a little bit of time every day to learn something or to become curious about something and learn, and then I just take whatever I learned and I turn it around into a post, like it's actually really simple. I'm not going to complicate it. I'm just going to keep it super simple. So anyway, um, that's kind of my, my thought on like the whole teamwork and team dynamic is that nobody can take your place. Everybody's interested in different things. We can all learn about different things. We can share that on our main feeds and on our teams. We'll grow our businesses and we'll strengthen the team. I'm now on a conference call, okay? Oops, you want to uh, mute Michelle? And then Phyllis, do you have anything to add to that part? Um, oh, just like affirmations too. Like we, we want to always recognize you guys for all the hard things you're doing because you are doing hard things. And sometimes like, uh, I have to just give a little shout out. Here's some affirmations, Miss Helen, this girl signed up. Yep. I'm looking at you. <laughs> this girl signed somebody up yesterday and her post to me the day before, I'm going to share it here was, I can't do this. This is too much for me. The nuts not made for this. And then guess what, sis, you're made for it. I hate to tell you that. Actually, I love to tell you that because you are. She shared with the sweetest young lady that I think we're going to change your dang life. That's what we're going to do. Um, she's in desperate need of some help. And Helen's heart found her. And actually, Helen posted. That's all Helen did was post. This girl found Helen. She reached out to Helen, but she's known Helen for a long time. So people that trust you are going to come find you. Not always come find you. You have to reach out too, right? But she came looking and when they come looking, you guys respond. Don't hide at your, you know, don't hide in a corner. Don't hide your bushel. Don't hide your light under that bushel. You got to shine it because you know what? You know who wants you to hide it? is Satan. And I'm a little bit of a God girl. I'm a lot of God girl. I don't have a heart. I don't have a problem saying that at all. Um, he really does not want us to do anything good in this life or good for other people. He doesn't want positivity. He wants a lot of negativity and there's plenty of that in this world. So, uh, it's our job. Plexus plopped in our laps, all of us for a good reason. And so I just want to, um, just kind of bring it back around to, uh, I just want to applaud you all for being here, for sharing, for sharing your heart, for doing stuff that's uncomfortable, that is very outside your comfort zone, because guess what? It's going to become very much in your comfort zone the more you do it. I used to tell Aiden, practice makes perfect, honey, when he was practicing his violin. It didn't sound really good when he started. It sounded pretty bad, but thank God I'm the mom, because when you're the mom, you're just so proud of him for even trying that somehow it feels, you know, it sounds okay. But the more they practice, the more you just, it you just brings you to tears because you're watching your baby blossom and master something that was really hard in the beginning. Um, but that's what I see you guys as you're becoming masters of this. And so it is hard in the beginning. I, I had sweat tacos. I, I was terrified. We went through a couple different back office changes. It was difficult. Um, I didn't know what each back office looked like and you would just go with the flow. You'd be like, what does your page look like right now? 
I'm learning. You are too, you know, like just, just give yourself some grace. Um, ask for patience from the people you're working with. Don't get terrified and freeze up and just, um, and then just decide I'm not going to do it because it's too hard or I don't understand the back office and I don't want to look like a dork. I still look like a dork because sometimes I'm like, gosh, I don't know what the page they're looking at looks like, but we're going to figure this out. That's what I always say to myself is we're going to figure this out and we're going to come up with a plan because this person needs flexes. And I don't, and I don't believe it's like, well, maybe it's a sign. I'm not supposed to sign up. No, everyone needs plexus. So, um, so anyway, affirmations, like how do we tell each other? We love each other every single day. How do we celebrate the wins? Um, this is something I just wanted to talk about because I know we all have different feelings here. And I know that maybe Brooke, you could just kind of talk about why you guys yeah. do shout outs on your page. That would be huge. Yeah. Yeah. And I had another thought and it literally just left my mind because my son wanted to give me a hug, which was so cute. He's like, mom, can I give you a hug right now? <laughs> uh, yes. You're almost 14 and you still want to hug me. So absolutely. You can hug me anytime you want. <laughs> um, uh, gosh, what was I going to say? Oh, when you were talking about back office changes and things that are hard, I was thinking um, while you were talking about that, that this business is actually really designed for people that want self-improvement. They want to improve themselves. Um, and you're here because you want to improve yourself. It's really easy to choose a career path or a job where you actually never have to personally grow. Um, you just get to show up, punch the clock. Um, it's, it's, very, it's almost kind of mindless work. Not that it's not work or not hard work, but there aren't a lot of professions that require you to personally grow to face your fears and to develop yourself more. And that is such a gift with network marketing. It's such a gift. It may seem really hard, but I can tell you that the lessons that you learn through digging into and developing a business in network marketing are incredible and they translate to all areas of your life. And because of that, the amount of personal development and growth that you've done will reflect over time in your business. The better you become, the better your business comes. And that's not saying if you have a small business that you suck. Like that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we all have room for improvement. And if we choose to continue to grow and learn and develop, our business will have nowhere to go but up. <clears throat> And our personal life too. So I love that. So I, I love to talk about recognition because I'll be honest with you, like in the beginning, I was embarrassed about recognition, actually. Phyllis, I don't know if you know this about me. Like I wouldn't let Amy announce me as winning certain things on my personal Facebook page because I didn't want people to think I was doing this like just for money or just for prizes or um, things like that. It was like almost this like prideful humility, if I'm honest, if that makes sense. Like I had a little bit of pride around being humble. And so it took me a while to realize that in not recognizing me, and not shouting out the things that I was doing. I was hiding what this business could do for other people. I was hiding what was available to other people. I was hiding that I had just won a $500 bonus. When if that had been shouted out on my page and on the team page, people that were on my team on the team page would see, oh my gosh, she got a $500 bonus. How do I get a $500 bonus? And on my personal page, oh my gosh, she got uh, a pair of Nikes and a luxury earrings. Like I've never had a nice pair of earrings in my life and my shoes have holes in them. How can I get something like that? It really is a representation of what is possible. That's what recognition is. It has nothing to do with humility. In fact, like I said, it's being prideful around this idea of you being humble. And I want you to know that some of the most successful people I know are also the most humble people, but they don't hide all of this stuff under a bushel. They share it because they want to vision cast and help other people dream. I share everything I earn now, everything. Like I don't hide anything. 
And yes, there will be some people that think, oh my gosh, like she's so braggadocious or whatever. But honestly, the majority of people just look at that and they're either like, that's really cool. She's worked really hard for that. Or wow, if she can do it, I can do it. And so I'm a firm believer that all these things, like all these things need to be celebrated, shouted out. You enroll somebody, you win your AirPods, you get on the leaders board, you went silver for the first time, you helped develop a new level one silver. All of these things should be celebrated because anything that you earn through Plexus is a representation of the number of people that you're able to help the number of people that you're able to get started on the products and in this business. And so as we move into a convention contest season, you better believe I'm going to work for every single prize on that thing. Because if I don't work for it, then my team's not going to work for it. If I don't try to earn everything and do my part with sponsoring and silvers and helping other people develop their teams, they're not going to win anything either. And I want everybody to walk away with $200, $500, $2,000 cash and all the other things. Why wouldn't I want that for other people? And why wouldn't we celebrate it? I also often think about my uncle. He was a state farm uh, insurance salesman for years and years. He's now 82. But um, he, would, he would often win cruises with state farm and other types of rewards with state farm. Nobody ever poo-pooed on him for sharing that he got a cruise or something else. The moment you shift into looking at this as a real business and you treat it as a real business and your friends and family and social media network know that this is a real business, of course there would be rewards that go along with building a business. If you were a pharmaceutical rep or you were any kind of sales rep in any kind of company, you would get bonuses, you would get trips, you would get prizes. It's, it's part of how business operates. If you were in a traditional business, you would receive quarterly bonuses. If your, your team that you managed you know, hit a certain mark, it's, it's the same thing for any business. And so if you have any kind of shame or embarrassment about that, I want you to just think about this. Like this is business, every business rewards their employees in various ways. The only difference is when I worked for a bank, I got a ham for Christmas. Like, that's all I got. I got a ham. <laughs> Last month, I got four Apple watches. That's way better than a ham. You know what I mean? And so we, we like get to show people like, okay, if you're not feeling appreciated in your current job or your current field, maybe it's time to think outside of the box and come over to a health and happiness company where you can work with people you love, you can earn great pay, you can earn great rewards. Um, and we need to be a culture of celebrating other people. If you struggle with wanting to hide that and being embarrassed about that, you've got to take a deeper dive look into why that is. And it, is there maybe a little bit of, of pride? And I don't mean to say you're a prideful person, but what is it that you're hanging on to? What is it that you're afraid of? And by you being afraid of that, how are you holding other people back from seeing what's possible? And if you do shy away from that, you're always only going to attract product users. You're not really going to have people that will build a business with you because there are people out there, especially since 78% of the population lives from paycheck to paycheck. There are people out there specifically looking for an opportunity, looking for a solution to the financial struggles they have. And if you're just sharing about gut health all the time and testimonials and you tell your sponsor, don't ever shout me out, you're never going to attract a business builder. That person's going to go with somebody else that's sharing the gut health and the testimonials and the business. So can I cap on that a little bit? Yeah. So um, remember when I first went silver, I deleted it from my page because Brooke posted it. Like I went silver my first day. I deleted it and I was like, please do not post on my Facebook page. And I was very brand new and um, it was fear. It was straight up fear. It was fear of what other people would think. It was fear of knowing that particularly there was one person that wouldn't like it. And, you know, hindsight, if they don't like it, then who cares? Like they're not your, they're not, you'll, you'll find 
who your true friends are. And the one thing I love about this business is it is, it's like what Bob Heilig says, it's self growth with a compensation plan. And we are working hard, right? Like we are doing work and why shouldn't we be rewarded for our hard work? And yeah, like Brooke said, she gets a ham. Like at the hospital, what do I get? What did I ever get? From the hospital nothing nothing but negativity you can save lives and you get nothing but negativity where here you get glory and praise and feeling and when you are praised it feels good like that feels good when somebody shouts, shouts you out it feels good so as, as long as your mindset is right right so as long as you're not living in the fear fear mindset in the scarcity mindset then you, you can receive that and you can you can even like grow from it and then you can spread it to other people so that was one thing i learned along the way and also your whys will change and it is so important to have a strong why because i'll tell you i had a why in the beginning and then i went on cruise control because i had was i was occupied on building my house i was occupied on saving my marriage which are all really great things to be you know building on and working on but at the same time your business will go on cruise control right and then you you kind of plateau and my why had to change and it grew and now i have a new why and i am ready like i am on fire to keep going in this business because there's not really any other place i would rather be honestly this is like to be surrounded by women and men that are uplifting and encouraging and helping others because that's what we're doing we're helping others to truly get to the root cause and feel their very best and i absolutely love that so i just kind of wanted to touch in on that a little bit and you will you'll change a lot as we grow we will change our wives will change we'll we'll um we'll be able to be better leaders we'll be able to help people even more and um it's okay if we if we don't, if we're not perfect, right? Like doing and being active is better than not doing anything in perfection, right? So I just wanna encourage you guys all to just keep pushing forward and keep digging deep because it's that inner growth that will lead you and people will follow. Yeah, thank you, Barbie. Um, so we are here as a partnership, you guys. I like to say, you know, we're partners in this. There's nobody that's, I say there's, there's upline, there's downline, sure. But you know what? I learn from everyone. Like, and that's my, right? That's just like, to me, that's a no brainer. But I just want you guys all to know that if somebody's feeling like, oh, I don't have anything to contribute. Mm -mm, I don't, I, you do, <laughs> you do have something to contribute. Maybe you just need to pray about that more really take some time to self-reflect and think, you know, what can I bring to this team that is going to um, help us grow in the right direction? Because we all want to grow and, um, and nobody's here to say I'm in charge. Uh, you know, there's some things that we've had to create. So somebody does kind of have to take the lead there. So we're creating, but it's the, it's the cohesiveness. It's this group here that is going to make it like explosive. You know, it's all the players of a basketball team, right? It's not just one person scoring all the goals. It's all the people that lead up to getting that goal scored. Sometimes there's, you know, a little helper that passes the ball over here to make that special shot. Um, or a baseball team, you know, your outfielder is just as important as your pitcher. So if you're going to win, you need all players of the team. And so, um, so anyway, I, I just want you to think about what can I contribute to this team? Because when we're really focused on that and helping others, our arrows are pointed out. Our arrows are pointed out and, and they're not pointed in. If it's all in, it becomes fear-based. It's like, you know, me, me, me. Oh, what are they gonna think about me? What are they gonna think about this? Brooke nailed it when she said, that's just like, it's just pride. It's like, it, you were really actually selfish because you're more worried about what people are thinking about you than what these products can do for people. And so if you turn your heart around flip that sucker around and point it out and all those energy beams going out to the to the world like oh my gosh there's no stopping you there is no stopping you and you will have no fear and you will say doggone it i see that young girl suffering i need to talk to her if she tells me no it's okay it's okay it's not her time 
you know, but also we lean into it, right? There's people that have objections or of cost or this or that, or you have your own pre preconceived ideas, right? I'm just going to share again with Helen because the, this happened just last night. It's so fresh in my mind. Um, Helen and I talked before we got on the call with this young girl and Helen said, listen, she's, um, you know, a single mama. Uh, she is getting divorced. Like there's a, there's a real story here. Okay. Of maybe she can't even afford this stuff. So, you know, in Helen's mind, she's, she is worried about, you know, being too high pressured or maybe she shouldn't even afford this, but here's the deal. We are all, we are all adults actually. And so as adults, we get to make our own choices and our own decisions. And that's something I've learned doing this two and a half years is you never ever underestimate what people, <clears throat> excuse me, need or want. This young lady with what she told me, you know, or shared with us, she ended up buying a family essentials welcome pack for $199. We also shared with her the opportunity to make money, which she desperately needs for this little family of hers and that she's essentially supporting. And so she went all in. And I just think that that was a great, great experience for Helen to see like, oh my gosh, yep. You know what? My, my idea is that she's not going to buy anything, but maybe the $99 welcome pack. And she bought more and she has intention to share. So we shared that with her and, and it, it is it's financially, physically, emotionally going to be a, a wonderful blessing for this young lady. And so, and I love that. Um, again, arrows were out. Helen doesn't care that she's getting $42 from that welcome pack. I'll guarantee you that Helen does not care. <laughs> I know that Helen's heart is in this a million percent. And as a bonus, Helen's getting $42 for that welcome pack. <laughs> well, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, um, so I just, I wanted to kind of just wrap this up and, and just kind of say like, um, you know, it's a new year and it's still just the middle of January. It's not even the middle of January. We're not even halfway through the month and you've had so much time over the holidays and with the new year and super Saturday to really think about what you want to create in 2020 not only what you want to create, but what you want to create for your team and people you love. And I want you to just get super, super concrete on that. And I want you to create something beautiful that you could put up in your house. So, you know, for some people, it's like a vision board. They'll take the magazines, do the old fashioned, cut it out kind of a thing. Like maybe you want to go to Tahiti and you want to have a new minivan or whatever. I don't know. Like, or Alexis or whatever, or um, you put a picture of your family on there that symbolizes you want more family time. Um, but you create something beautiful like that, or maybe it's not like that because you're not an arts and crafts person, but you know, maybe it's something that you type up in a beautiful font and you put in a frame on your desk, or you write out some affirmations and you put them all over your house. Affirmations about what, who you are, what you are creating, what you are capable of. Um, having those visual reminders will really help you to stay on track because this business is really simple. It's so simple. It's just as easy not to do as it is to do. Reach out to people. Use send, share, invite. Send a video. Send a story invite them to try the products. If it's a no, cause they're not sure, invite them to a three day sampling challenge. If it's a no, cause they're not sure, invite them to try a sample and send them, send them a stick of slim, a stick of active, a video, take that baby step. It really is simple. And as you keep it simple like that, and then you teach your team members to keep it simple like that, you are going to see things start to gain momentum on your team. And as you're trying to develop people, even if they say they're not about the business, remember, most people that start sharing are not necessarily doing it to create a big business. They're doing it because you have taught them that they have a product that can change people's lives. And you have taught them how simple it is with the power of three to be able to get their products paid for. And so when you are teaching them those things, every single time you're going to start to have more people that start sharing and you're going to teach them send, share, invite. It's so simple. Send a message, then a video and a story, share a testimonial, invite them to start on the products with your product recommendation. 
So always keep it simple, but definitely this week as you're heading into, we have a three-day challenge that starts tomorrow. It's okay if you totally forgot about it and didn't invite anybody. Guess what? You have time today. And if they don't get any samples, that's okay. If they live locally, drop off a stick of slim, a stick of active, or just a stick of slim, whatever you've got. You don't have, they don't have to have a three-day pack. Drop off some samples, get them in the three-day sampling group. And I would give you guys a goal to each get two new people into that group. And then any new ambassadors that you have that have recently started on the products in the last month or so, if they've never been in a three-day challenge group on Facebook, add them to our three-day challenge group. Of course, before you add them, ask them. Say, hey, we have this three-day info group that has testimonials and product information. I know you're newer on your products. would love to add you to this group just so that you can get a better handle on the products, how they're going to help you, and also so that you can see people's stories of success as you are working on your own health success story. Um, we have some business success stories that we share in there on day three as well that will cast a little bit of vision for them. So I just am going to encourage you to do that this week. Two new people in the challenge and get very, very clear on what 2020 means to you and what you're going to create for this year. I hope that's okay, Phyllis. Give them a little assignment. Yeah, no, I love it. And I would love to just, just add on to that is, and then share it, like put your, put your goals. I would love to see your goals and our silver and beyond thread. Um, so, and then I can help you if you want, develop a plan for that. Okay, because goals without a plan, it's just something that you're just not going to succeed with that. So, so um, I love it. So there's your homework. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks so much, Brooke, for coming. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing thank up. You. We love you Thanks all. for having me. So much. Yeah. Love you guys.